What's up everyone? Welcome back to another brand new video. It's been a while. I've been mostly focusing on school, but every day around 10 p.m. around there, sometimes I, I doze off and I end up doing other things. But regardless, before bed, I always read my Bible and I am finally finished Exodus. I can't believe it. What's well, called a lot has changed. Last time I was there uh, doing Genesis, it was Christmas. <laughs> or it ended on Christmas. So I'm happy that Exodus is now here and I'm about to talk about it. I'm about to go through it for my Bible study or not my Bible study, but just to jot stuff down, I guess it technically is Bible study. And uh, I also bought myself a journal. This doesn't say God, it says good. I have officially, like I said, I bought highlighters. I officially, um, oh look, there, it's right here. Do you guys wanna uh, find like the, the link that I used? This is a no bleed highlighter i'll put it in the link in the description i'm not sponsored by it but i mean it works so i'm gonna pass it to you guys i don't know i just got really into it this is not really real real leather i mean it kind of feels like it this one feels like really really pristine um both of those will be on the link in the description i don't know about that that journal though um because i did find, find it in a family dollar or something like that anyway uh, so let's get into it. Okay, so there's a lot that I kind of wanted to walk through uh, in Exodus. I want to read Le Leviticus, and that's like my next uh, thing to do. But before I get there, I got to point out some things that I highlighted. Exodus 15, 12 and down. It just a, like, just a little part. It says, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in, the e in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. This is one of the most craziest things because... Uh, Moses ends up telling them, the, the people that he, uh, he helped slave, I mean, free from slave, was don't be afraid, which that's all, that's in a, that's a whole thing in itself. Then he says, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. I love that because sometimes there's moments in life where we kind of just, we're just so focused, we're so tunnel vision that we don't really acknowledge like, that God is there for us and God loves us and God cares about us. And uh, it's not like we just forget. It's more of just like we're prioritizing other things. We're prior prioritizing worldly things. And the radio for w the world is so loud that sometimes we put the volume of God down. And there's a lot of problems to that because we don't get to have that faith. We don't get that. We don't get to have that faith. We don't get to have that closure. To just sit there and be like, you know, I'm going to wait um, because God has something in store for me. And that just resonated with me. Also, when I was reading this, I watched the movie uh, the, Prince of, the Prince of Egypt. If you haven't checked it out, it's literally about probably like the first quarter of Exodus. Um, I noticed that it doesn't continue it after I read all of Exodus. And um, But if you are a kid and you're a child and you want to get into the bible i recommend you watching that show or that movie because that movie is honestly really well done and they tried their hardest to do like certain things but it's nice to like visually in, uh see it you know like in first hand which i think is really really cool and um it kind of brings it to life so it's really awesome so then the next one is uh exodus 20 uh two down so I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. Uh, break. And it says, um, you must not make your, for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of any kind in the heavens or on earth or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord of the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. There's two things in there. The the first half, the first half kind of reminds me of like, don't be other people's gods. And I kind of resonate with that a lot. Like, I mean, you have no idea. On my progression of becoming a musical artist, I've accidentally stumbled upon this idea that I have to be godlike to be great, you know? So uh, shamefully, um, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I made a, uh, a collection or a compilation of my music called One Idol. And it literally says, you must not make for yourself an idol. So I know it's referring to do not worship something or do not create this figment of like, I don't know, for example, like Zeus. Do not 
truly believe in this idea that Zeus ex ex exists for you uh, because only God is God, right? King of kings is the king of all kings. But um, I, actually, I actually broke that down and I kind of make it more of about a personal way where it's just like, I don't know, it just resonated with me. So with that said, I if you go and check out my One Idol record, uh, or my compilation, I'm going to change that name. I'm going to change the, the cover, not the cover, but like the title. And um, I don't know what I'm gonna name it to, but I'm going to name it uh, and change it because I just, I don't know, I just, I realized that like, and I it's true. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's not because I had the belief that I was being godlike. And that's the only way for me to be successful in the music world, and that's not true. And there's a lot that's gonna happen in the future with my music, and I can't wait. I'm right now focusing on school. I, I want to get back into it. I really do. It's like my passion. And there's a way to have a, a fun environment with your passion, and also still pursue the word of God. So I'm going to be doing that uh, soon. But anyway, in the very beginning, it says. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. And then he also says, I skipped this part, but he says, you must not have any other God but me. I should have highlighted that too. Basically, that first part kind of says, do not go back to the place that I rescued you from. It's kind of like the house is on fire and a fireman just takes me out and I'm like, thank you so much. I'm gonna go to bed and then run back in. Like, no, guy. <laughs> <laughs> you got rescued for a reason, you know? So I find that really, really, uh, I don't know, just shocking to me and just like, it, it resonated with me a lot. Uh, you don't want to go back to the place that God delivered you from. And a lot of people might want to go and talk to the same people or talk to the same uh, community that they used to be with or in the same neighborhood. But if God rescued you from that position, why are you still living in that area? Why are you still socializing with these people? Why are you still putting yourself in this trenches when you're not supposed to be there? You have been saved. And um, I feel like that's a, is it just me or does my nose look six times bigger? <laughs> now that I mention it, everyone's thinking about it. But it's just so important that you all think about that, like, because I've had that uh, recently and um, I wasn't going to that same place, but if it's if it's liquor, if it's alcohol, don't go to a bar. You know, yes, you can have the the power of your the your will. You know, if you have a strong will, you can tell yourself, "I'm not gonna drink. I'm not gonna drink." That's fine. But like, you understand the situations. You know that you're not gonna drink. You know you're not gonna do drugs. You you know you're not gonna do these things. Why would you still put yourself in the position where it's just arm's reach? You know, uh, and I know it's it's easier said than done, but uh, I've had that fair share of um, realization. So overall, uh, Exodus, I find that the journey is overwhelmingly um, kind. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't explain to you how many times God has gifted a chance for His people, not just for His people, but also for the Pharaoh. And the thing that I find so like shocking is because we discover, and I've mentioned this in Genesis, and I, I didn't know when it was going to happen, but we discover what a hardened heart means. I highly recommend you checking that out because you get to hear my thoughts on a hardened heart without any context, without any information. But now that I have that, I would say that having a hardened heart is probably one of the most scariest moments in life because you are in complete disbelief. You're completely like blocking the idea that God is king and he's truly your love and he loves you so much but um what what the pharaoh keeps doing is he keeps looking at the witches or the 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 sorcerers and says do what he just did and they would you know conjure something up and they'll do it and he'll be like oh you see and it's crazy because i'm reading this and i could see that it's a much uh, smaller scale than whatever god's doing See, when God made all the toads come out of every river and fill up the entire room, he told, he told uh, the, what's it called? The Pharaoh told all the sorcerers to do the same thing. And it, they just came out of a pond. And then when Moses made his staff into a snake, he said the same thing for their snake or whatever, their staff to become a snake. But Moses' snake ate that snake 
and he still chooses to have a heart and heart. And I find that like crazy. There's been multiple scenarios. I'm just gonna name those two. And I find it like very shocking because like, have I, and I kind of ask myself and I hope you, you ask yourself, but have I stumbled upon that problem where I think that I'm purposely just avoiding God? And um, I feel like that's just the take that you kind of have to like, kind of bear and swallow that pill because in reality, that's, that's, a, that's a sad thought, you know? But the fact that God's willing to be there patiently waiting for you is insane. Another moment comes up when people from Egypt, they ask for food and God creates food out of the ground. And they, he says, do not get more than what you need. And they would do that, but some people were still greedy. And then God punished them by making the, their food go moldy and just horrible so it's not easy to consume. And then next time food comes up, they do the same thing. And then again and again, and eventually they start all like, okay, now we're gonna only eat what we are supposed to, and they only get a certain amount of food. And then the, the, the slaves, no longer slaves, they all say, well, we want something a little bit different, like a little bit more taste into it, uh, not just to fill our stomachs. And instead of God just being like, I'm literally giving you food every day or every week or like effortlessly, but he, instead of him doing that, he says, okay. And he gave them uh, birds. I believe it was birds or flocks of birds just came down. And they all started eating them and hunting them like savage animals. And I think that's just the most craziest moment. Like, it shows our greed. Even though that we are in the path of, like, righteousness. Even though God is literally right there saying, I saved you. Do this now. We still go, nah, <laughs> I find it so crazy. I, I honestly just don't understand it. And then to top it all off, Mount Sinai, S-I-A-N-I, I think, I don't know. Moses goes on top of that mountain and speaks to God and God uh, is talking to him. And he's telling him about the whole commandments. He's itching that off uh, with his finger, like actually cutting through it with the, the, the what's it called? tablet i guess it literally kind of it kind of says like the people down uh waiting for god they're kind of like oh this is taking too long what if moses is dead and uh we have to start worshiping something else and i think it was aaron i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right i'm pretty i'm pretty sure aaron is like okay give me all your jewelry so everyone takes off the jewelry and he smelts it and it just becomes this item and I guess that's where it comes from. Like, do not idolize anything uh, to replace your God. And it creates this, like, kind of shape of an animal. And they're like, oh, my gosh, that's, uh, is it coincidence or is it God? And they start worshiping that now. Literally, on top of the mountain, Moses is talking to someone. Yes, or to God. And yes, it's taking for a, uh, a very long time. They're still going, like, yeah, they're taking too long. Let's just worship something else. Like, bro, <laughs> like it's crazy. And uh, that also kind of lets us know that we're worshiping people. We need to worship something. Um, we cannot just live our life mundane and not believe in anything, uh, which is crazy that people choose to. Um, because that's a whole topic of it in itself. Like, I mean, you're, you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders if you choose not to be... Um, a follower of Christ I mean and I, I, I wanted to make a video about this uh, on my social media but anyway that's future talk right now I'm just saying like we are worshiping people we desperately need something and we desperately uh, need some divine uh, love and um, it's important that that we worship God and we stay true to him even in the hard times if something bad's happening thank God if something good's happening thank God um, just regardless, like it's his will, you know, and denying yourself and letting God do his thing through you is, um, hard for some people, but it took me a little bit and I was just like, okay, like, this is it, you know, this is, this is the right course. I know it by my heart. I know that what I'm doing is right. And it's like that. I mean, it's just like that. Yes. Yeah, that's it. So 
I only jot down things that kind of resonate with me and I have to like write my little input. But regardless, thank you all for watching my Exodus overview. I'm trying to keep it uh, simple, less than like an hour. <laughs> We're doing good so far. But that's my main goal and I just kind of want to make it like easy for people to digest. I don't know why I did like a freaking one hour special last video. I apologize, but I had so much to say. Um, but anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you for taking taking uh, time to checking this video out. I hope the audio is good. I have this little mic thing here um, that I've been gifted. A huge announcement. There is going to be a brand new podcast of mine that's coming out and I will announce it on my social media. So please check it out. I won't announce it now because I haven't recorded episode one yet. I remember that I would pray, I'd be like, God, please send someone to show me, send someone to show me. It wasn't until later on when I was saved that I received the Holy Spirit that I could read and be like, you know what, this makes so much sense to me now. Yeah, uh, I feel this, it's him, like that. I called it like four times, it's him, go, him, 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 like that. I was like, okay. And I was just like, oh. wow. My mom was practically dying, legit. And like uh, fireworks of color came all through our body and right there I was just, as soon as I said it in the name of Jesus, boom, it happened. And I was just like, and I felt that feeling come off me. It's not just like a one and done thing. I've done it multiple times and God's will has been done and it's super like awesome. It wasn't like, let me just try this. It was like, I got no other option. Mm -hmm. And then it worked. And that's when I was like, what the heck? That's like, I feel like that's a conviction of the Holy Spirit saying like, this is something you're supposed to do. Love you all, I appreciate you. Take care, God bless you. And if you're interested in just jumping into the Bible, uh, a lot of people say they recommend the Gospels and you get to learn and get to know Jesus a lot. And I can't wait for that. But I gotta go into Leviticus and continue on. I wanna, I wanna read it chronological. And there's so many times where I feel like I'm missing something out. <laughs> but anyway, God bless you all. Take care. And I hope my nose doesn't look insanely huge. I'm looking like swig root out here. Alright, God bless you. Bye-bye.